Last year uh, I was here at NordConf and Andrew from OpenRoad was here also, so I promised him to show what we are doing with OpenRoad uh, and that actually it can work even for a smaller commercial projects. So what, what we do at the, at the company, our typical setup is that we have some larger size ASICs uh, that, that are a detection, uh, detect particles. Then we ship all the data to some bulky FPGAs and then we process the data into the computers and then we build these nice devices here which are used to do uh, diffraction patterns and many fancy things. How does this work? Okay, so the problem is uh, we had uh, some generation of ASICs that had a parallel bus to, that transfers data to the FPGA and there are issues with parallel buses but and uh, we wanted to replace this with a, a serial bus and if you have a serial bus you need to bit uh, more fancy logic so we have a, a chip which has some user logic there's some computation and, uh, and data collection but now we need a bit of digital logic to to do encoding in, in our case 64 66 bit it's it's a protocol to serially send uh, it's a way to send serially data to the to the FPGA in our case. And uh, for that, we design an ASIC. It's a just very simplified version of this ASIC, where we send some commands and a clock to the chip. It's received, the serialized. Then there's some user logic that makes something with our data. Then we need encoding, framing, and serialization. And then we have a serializer and a, and a output driver. Some parts are custom made, made in an analog uh, process, and then we need this digital part. So now we need to pick our tools. So that's, uh, that's what we are, uh, I guess, at the moment into. We have the three companies, <laughs> and, uh, and then there is some open source uh, flows here that we will try to use. That does not. Does this switch? Sorry, battery is off. No. no. Okay. Okay. So we pick our uh, open road uh, flow. Typically, it's uh, we have some RTL files. Then we go through synthesis. Uh, here we go through open road uh, physical implementation. And that's a standard thing. I think we've seen this many times, but also we need this PDK. So from the design files, what we need is we need some RTL, some constraint files, and some more awkward things in the future. Also sometimes like unified power formats and other things, but mainly those two if you do some simpler designs. And one thing we need is to verify this design. And last year I had a talk how we could verify design in a bit different way than everybody else. Okay. Sorry. Technical issues. I'm sorry. And just wanted to pay your attention that uh, in a modern microelectronics design, mo we are uh, most of the conference focuses here somewhere <laughs> about the IP, a bit of on the physical implementation. But the, the big part is verification and software. Maybe software is not our part of this conference, but the verification is bigger than all, 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 all other things together in terms of cost. And uh, in, in some people's opinion, that's the place where we could easiest attack open source projects. But we will have some talks about it later. Um, so 
you have a multiple of processes. This is an example from your practice website. This is, this is the processes that uh, as university or smaller companies you have access to, and none of those are open. And okay, what we do with that, if you have a company which for multiple years designing in a process that is not open, and you have to, in order to have this, your design, you have to port it. So what is a PDK? PDK is the design rules that define geometries of your circuits. There is a layer stack up which defines your parasitics and rules, and there are transistor models. Okay. What is a digital PDK is there is a lib files that you receive that you can generate that was shown that you often get them from the fab that defines the timing uh, tables, timing tables and some other things for your standard cells. There is a left file which defines some simple geometrical rules and the layout of the standard cells and you need a parasitic extraction file. So first thing we do is you want, uh, you, we do synthesis. So we take the RTL, we take the SDC and the lib files, we run it through the IOSIS and we generate a netlist. And first thing you realize in IOSIS, if you do flatten, your design will be 23 kilogates in this case, but the hierarchical will be 32, so use flat. The consequence of being flat is that you get this kind of funny numbers and debugging something later on is, very, is painful. Um, Yossi's performance is slowly approaching the performance of commercial tools. This is a talk from ETH. They, they did uh, RISC-V core and they tried to improve it. So now here we are with the Yossi's and here with the commercial tool. There is still a gap, but that's for many applications is not really relevant to be uh, on the top. Um, interesting what happens if you are in this uh, business, you don't have some really, it's not a commercial tool, but uh, um, I started the project with Yossi's 0.13 because this was the version in the open road repository that day, or two years ago say, and, uh, and then you update your, uh, the Yossi's, you run it through and uh, your design is half size, lots of beautiful uh, situation you finish with, but that's not the case. Half of design was removed because I used some system very uh, construct like the structure, the packed structure. And uh, it gives a warning, one of many warnings that you have to be careful because your design is missing, it's, it's empty. <coughs> so all those became zeros and then he optimized it out. So be careful. In order normally for a typical PDK, the only major thing you have to do, and it's not so difficult actually, is to generate the extraction file for OpenRCX. So um, the open road uses this kind of a file to extract the parasitics. And in order to do it, you have to have the technology file. The, there is a tool to generate all kind of patterns. Then you have to run your commercial tool or magic if you have one. Uh, if you can do magic or a commercial tool to generate extraction file. And based on those patterns, this file, there is a generation, uh, open RCX will generate you uh, a special file needed for extraction during the open road flow. Okay, then you take your netlist, your SDC file, lib file, left file, and this X generated file, you run it through the open road and you get a layout. This is how this goes, the steps, but it's so then you have a layout in our chip is pretty strange geometry, as you see, uh, for a reason, but uh, that makes a bit of a trouble. So what you end up, you end up with small issues and bigger issues, I will mention a few. One issue is that uh, you, got, you run the throw and then you generate a GDS and you run the DRC on it and you finish with thousands of euros of this, this small VR on, on, on a metal. And, what happens is that there in the left file there is a rule called area which defines what's the minimum area of a metal on, on the minimum area of the metal at all. So open road at some point will add this piece of metal, this extension. And then when you run check antennas, which is another thing that checks the antennas uh, rules, it will disappear magically. And uh, yeah, it's pretty annoying. So there is a <laughs> there is an issue and, and we found a workaround for that. But uh, 
yeah, apparently solution is not uh, above the triviality problem, but yeah. And uh, normally you would have a support and maybe they could do something with that. And another issue there was, I'm not sure if this is a tool issue or something else, but just mentioning because it's interesting. The antenna rules during the processing, you charge up, the, you do planarization and, and you can charge up metals and destroy the gates of the transistors. For that reason, you have antenna rules which define how much metal you can connect to a particular gate and how much diffusion. And, and in the left file, there is this kind of a rule. And you run the flow and you finish. This is a left file provided by the FAP itself. And uh, you run it through and you finish. There's thousands of errors. It's pretty annoying to fix this. No way to fix this. And um, at the end, what I finish is um, brutally try to find the numbers that would actually match. I don't know whose fault is that. But uh, yeah, th th this takes some time. Um, but the biggest problem is this one. Uh, because you've seen uh, this chip is particularly strange geometry. It's not square. It's, it's very, um, it's, it's not uh, uh, this kind of geometry. It has very long wires. And you have a problem with signal integrity. So what happens is signal integrity is this issue when you have two coupled wires together. The, then you have uh, one signal on, uh, going this path, another signal going this path. This um, hopefully is visible, but the, it slows down the signal, or it can also cause crosstalks and uh, bumps on between the signals. And uh, OpenSTA, which is the engine that checks for timing and does timing analytics in open road, does not support signal integrity or did not support a few months ago. There is something happening, but I don't fully understand what. Uh, and uh, so. I know those problems may exist. We had a, we have a commercial tool that we checked, and there was, a, it was really a, a large amount of issues with signal integrity. So there is a. You can add few comments to Open Road, and fix this, and then you'll cross check with a commercial tool, and it's fine. But if you don't do it, your design will not work. So be careful. And. Uh, So we have a chip, you generate a chip, we get it back and we measure it and we have fully functioning 10 gigabit link um, done with open source tools. And, uh, yeah. So don't be afraid, it actually can work and it just, yeah. Um, Conclusions. Uh, we used 110 nanometer technology. The reason is because we have a lot of IP in this technology. We used, we, and uh, we had to use it. It's, there is no support for open source tools, but uh, it's not so hard to port the, 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 the PDK. We successfully uh, taped out and measured 10, gigab uh, 10 gigabit link. This is designed with about 50,000 gates and non-trivial geometry. We also did some other designs that are successful. It's fine. Uh, expect some issues on the way. Be careful. And some commercial support is probably still needed in order to be sure that you don't waste uh, a lot of money and time, which is probably even worse. And at the moment, from my point of view, the biggest issue, which is super dangerous, is that uh, there is no signal integrity integrated. And I would be afraid to submit a expensive chip without check. Um, yeah, and that's all. Thank you. Any questions? Um, so in the slide you show that the clock was still transferred. Is it uh, is that true for this chip, or did you do CDR uh, for all the the, the serial links? No, we links? did not use CDR on this chip. Okay. There, there is no. I will not go into technicalities, but there is no reason to do it, so we did not do it. Okay, but but you would have the PLLs and stuff available. Yes, if we need, we could do it. Yes. Okay. PLLs. Thank you. Some other questions. How much? 250,000. What? Yes. 
<laughs> it's cheap. But that, that's why you have to be careful. But it's cost is not the most uh, critical offense. It's time which is critical. Well, whilst it's obviously awesome to see, see you do this work with open source tools, I'm wondering if you found advantages to using the open source tools versus the proprietary ones, or if this was very much a, I want to see if I can do this kind of thing. <laughs> uh, technically, mm. advantage, probably not, no. But I don't have to deal with licenses and contracts and on all these things. And we are a small company uh, and it probably takes more time to negotiate the contract than just set up this. <laughs> okay, we will listen. Yes, please. Um, have you ever tried to convince any of the um, fabs with commercial processes to actually provide a setup for open road or any of the open source tools? The reality, nobody will talk to us. Um, they will not talk to any of us. There's, uh, in order to any kind of a serious fab to talk with a actually customer, we actually cannot talk with the fab ourselves directly. We always go through a brokerage because in order to, um, as far as I understand, in order to have any access to, to, the, to the foundry people, you need to order under 50,000 wafers a year. And if it's less, which in our case is, they will not talk to you. Like they, they have no interest in you at all. Like not, not. If you find a bug in their PDK, they don't care also. It's your problem. Or choose a smaller fab. Or you choose something, yes, that is available, like uh, here. But there are other issues with that too, so... Okay. Um, Thank you. It is this trap when you order about 1,000 wafers a year. It's uh, too much for very small fabs and too little to care about the big ones. But, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Now it's come to my... Yeah. Uh, yet another small change.